Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. We're going to be canning some deer meat today. Uh, this is actually soaking uh, just to thaw it out. This was a little bit frozen. I have, uh, I think, three or four more bags that are thawed out already, so I'm kind of just taking my time. Uh, the basic premise is simple. Cube it, put it in your jars, and then pressure can it for however you're, long you're supposed to. With pints, and at my elevation, it is uh, 75 minutes. If I use quartz, it would be 90 minutes. And I would use quartz, but I don't have any wide mouth lids. All I have is the standard lids. So, uh, I think I've got a little over a dozen. And I don't know if I have enough meat ready to, to fill all that, but I'm sure going to try. Well, I've got everything uh, thawed out pretty much. Some of it was roast. Uh, some of it is actually butterfly steaks. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say I'm ruining the meat by canning it like this. This would be a, a good steak as that is a cut of the loin. But it's my son's deer and that's how he wants it. So that's what we're going to do. A lot of these could probably just be cut in half. Just that actually would probably be good enough. And I'm just going to take them. They're going in the bowl. They're not going in the jars just yet. Uh, I'm going to put a little special seasoning homemade mix. This isn't flavor glow like it says on the thing. You see there it says mix. It's a uh, the special blend of stuff that we do and uh, we kind of put it on everything. I have not canned deer meat with it before. I'm going to give it a shot and see how that goes. Uh, I have canned pork and something else I can't remember. Uh, the pork, pork turned out amazing. I'm not really that big of a pork eater but uh, worked out pretty good. I got into canning I'll say six or ten years ago or something uh, I had to go without and I promised myself that I would never do that again and I taught myself how to how to reserve food I do the the smoking meat on the, the little homemade tarp smoker and of course, canning. Uh, got a dehydrator. We made uh, made jerky, a lot of jerky actually, and it came out pretty good. <clears throat> now, that's where I kind of got my start into into doing this. It's a skill that everybody should know anyway. I think everybody originally knew it, and uh, just nobody taught their their kids. I remember helping mom and grandma back in the 80s when I was just a kid there that uh, we'd sit on the porch and snap beans all night and soak them or however the process was. I don't really remember how to do the beans but I remember snapping them and pretty sure you soaked them and then in the morning we'd uh, have probably two or three pressure canners going and other stuff too, not just the beans. I mean, there'd be water bath canners going, and it was uh, it was fun. Kids today don't understand that, and it's our own fault. We're letting them do that. That's what I mean about uh, people just don't don't teach their kids anymore. Like right now, I'm remote learning my son. Uh, from school. It's kind of like homeschooling, but he's still in his school, but we're just doing the remote learning. Like, I should have him in here doing this. And my oldest son, he's here too. He's actually sleeping in. Uh, he, My oldest son is not homeschooled <coughs> or uh, remote schooled, but they don't have schools on a school on Mondays. I guess that's the day that they they clean the, the schools and sanitize everything. Of course, there's jokes. People say you can only catch Corona on Monday, so that's the day you have to stay home from school. So I've got everything cut up and in the bowl, and I'm thinking five or six. I got five jars here. I'll grab because now these are new jars. I'm not going to sterilize them. If they were used, uh, I would put them in the dishwasher and run it on steam and let them drip dry, or put them upside down in the oven instead of drip drying and uh, run it for, I don't know, 20 minutes at 250 degrees. That's usually enough to take care of any heebie-jeebies in there. 
And it's a good idea to give your rims a once over. Make sure there's no chips and cracks. That does happen. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. So, <clears throat> okay. Uh, this is my special secret family recipe. And that might be way too much. I don't know. Let's get in here and slop her around. Yeah, that's good. You can cut up garlic, which I was going to do. And I was going to even try a little bit of onion in with it, little tiny pieces of onion. But I didn't have any. So, that would be a good day to do this. Oh, I forgot my funnel. <clears throat> Funnel's a must-have. Helps keep all that grease off the, the brim. Put her in. I think you're supposed to leave a, a half inch or something at the top. Three quarters of an inch, I suppose. Uh, that's because stuff does expand and move around. Uh... Do, don't add any liquid to it. There's not a lot of fat in this, but there'll be enough. Yeah, that's good enough. I probably, eh. That's good enough. I'll set her off to the side. Rinse and repeat. Now, I really underestimated the amount of meat that I was going to need. I hate only doing a couple jars. I hate running the, I mean, running the, the pressure canner when I only have a few jars to do, so. There's still a whole deer in the freezer, minus this amount, and then the two, uh, two batches of jerky we did. <clears throat> and I think this year, in my county, I don't quote me on this, but I think it's legal to get four deer per person on, on for a uh, landowner. I don't know. I did look at the laws, but I don't remember exactly what it was now, so don't go off of that. Don't go out and say, yeah, Aaron from Prepping Ohio said that I was allowed to do this. But it's something along those lines. That's a little bit too much. Um, yeah, just a touch. Touch too much. Okay. See what we can get here. I don't have the lids simmering yet. I just turned the water on back there, so I'll have to get them guys in there in a little bit. Okay. Might only be five. Kind of a bummer. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna get is five here. And these are pints. Man, just barely five. I take one out of this one, put it in there. Kind of like four and a half. Whatever. I don't feel like waiting to cut up any more. Although I may, I may just do that. I may put this in the fridge and let the other stuff thaw and cut it up. Actually, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I did end up thawing out, sort of thawing out, uh, a lot more meat here. And uh, it's, it's almost exactly the same thing. Uh, different cuts a little bit, but for the most part, they're, they're pretty much the same. Just more uh, rinse and repeat stuff here. And some of it does have the, the crap in the middle of it there. I think you can see that. Uh, I really don't give two shits. Something to mention would be like the blue skin or the silver skin. Man, this guy's still frozen. I thought he was thawed out more than that, but uh, the silver skin, I hear some. That stuff right there, you're not going to want to put that in. And little bits is kind of okay, but if it's a big streak down the side or whatever, you're going to want to cut it off. Little stuff like this, oh, right here's a perfect example. It gets rough down here, but up here, it's not that bad. Now you can kind of deal with that stuff there. But this whole piece right here will have to be peeled. But, for the most part, it's just uh, cross grain it. And what I mean by cross grain, if you can see, meat kind of has grains. I'm not trying to teach somebody how to do something that they already know, but cross grain is my lingo that I use. You cut across the grain, you cut it this way. If you don't, you cut it this way, you got long stringy pieces and it's just a little harder to chew, I guess. Uh, but 
cross grain would be this way instead of with the grain. So, that's just what we do. And this knife is, I just sharpened it, but <clears throat> a little bit of fat. We're getting into weird cuts of meat here too. Uh, might have been a neck muscle or something. And we'll split that in half there. And the same thing. Rinse and repeat. Make her happen, Captain. Well, I'm running out of room in my bowl here, so I need to figure out something to do with all this. Oh, I did wash that again. I didn't want it sitting there for so long. It did take probably two hours for all this meat to, to kind of thaw out with the, the cold water technique. And some of it is still a little bit frozen, but <clears throat> not real bad. Like, that guy's kind of hard. I mean, whatever. This salt will help it. Help everything kind of straighten out. Okay, so I'm just barely on camera here. You still see I got several chunks there to cut up yet. Oh, I need to get that little fella out of the fridge. And by little fella, I mean the one that didn't. My hands are all crapped up. Well, I'll do all this first. And by little fella, I mean the one that didn't get filled up all the way. Kind of wish you guys could smell this. It's pretty incredible. There we go. Get that baby in there burping. And it sure was foggy this morning. It was really foggy. Pretty cool though, looking at uh, looking at the stuff coming up through the trees. The sun just sneaking out. I did stay in the cabin again last night, and uh, took care of a lot of the mold issue. Little Clorox wipes and that kind of kind of took care of a lot of it. Uh, somebody did recommend some, I can't remember what they called it, something I've never heard of before. And fogging, obviously, I've heard of that, but whatever they said to fog with, I can't, I can't remember what they said, but uh, I appreciate the recommendation. may have to look into that too. I mean, something's got to happen with it. All the bedding and stuff needs to be removed and cleaned up. But that'll happen. Okay, here's a little fella. Let's top him off. Good stuff. My God, it smells good. I hope it tastes as good as it smells. So I'm kind of wondering how much we're going to end up with after this is all said and done. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So out of that, I ended up with 14 pints. I did end up finding two wide mouth jars, thankfully, but they're just pints. I can't put that on uh, quarts. You can't mix quarts and pints when you're when you're canning because the time is set for pints and there's a different time for quarts. Uh, I think I mentioned it before, this will be at 10 pounds for 75 minutes. If it was uh, quartz, it would be 10 pounds for 90 minutes. 10 pound has to do with my elevation. If I was over 1,000 feet in elevation, then I would go to, uh, to 15 pounds. And there's people that get a little weird. They want to go like 11.25 pounds. Uh, you know, do what you want. My pressure canner doesn't have a gauge. It has weights. And uh, it's always worked fine for me. So, let's get them in. Now, of course, there's different methods to canning. Uh, this is the cold pack method. That everything kind of heats up all together. The hot pack method is where you, you cook the meat a little bit beforehand. Uh, I'm just not doing that here. Because I've done this a bunch. The hot pack I've done a few times, but it's not, uh, it's never really any different from what I can tell or what I remember. So there's little lines. I don't know if you can see the lines here on the side. There's increments. And you're supposed to go up to a certain amount, whatever, a minimum. Uh, I go to the bottom line and then up about half. That's usually good enough for me. Man, I wonder if I can get these guys a little bit another in here. I'm always concerned about them banging together. Yeah, I'll just do this. There we go. That's good enough. 
the water doesn't have to cover the lids. Actually, you don't want the water to cover the lids. Because they will vent. There is a thing that you can put in here, but I don't have that, so... We'll just see how this comes out, I guess. Uh, hopefully these guys don't bounce around in here too much. Uh, I might already. Actually, let's just swap this bad boy out right there. There. It looks somewhat more stable. So it's already starting to heat up. Yeah, I am a little concerned about this. Guess we'll just see how it goes. Eh. Can't be too bad, I suppose. There. Like Jenga. Okay. Now my pressure canner doesn't have a gauge. And, uh, I put it on. Sealer tight. This is a Presto pressure canner. It's probably the bottom line of of uh, pressure canners. The bottom of the barrel, I guess, maybe. Uh, I don't care. It works fine for me. This is my little 10-pound weight. There's, that would be 5 pound I guess, and then you put that on, that's 10 pound, and if you're over 1,000 feet you put the second ring on. But now i got to wait until this starts spitting steam. And once it does that, uh, then we'll wait 10 minutes and let it vent for 10 minutes. Actually, I might vent for a little bit more, just because a lot of that stuff is kind of cold. So, now it's just a, just a waiting game. Now she's been venting for a little over 15 minutes here, and uh... I'm going to put the weight on. You can hear the bubbling going there. It got a lot quieter. I know you probably couldn't see it because everything's white back here, but there was a column of steam coming up out of here. And once this bad boy starts rocking, that will mean that we're up to roughly 10 pounds of pressure, at which time the dial I will turn down to about eh, straight across, about four or three, whatever. I mean, all the way up as high. And it's not really like a temperature sort of thing. I just do whatever, you know. When this guy's rocking, he'll start rocking real fast. And then I'll dial it back. And we'll just go from there. And uh, once it starts rocking, that's when you start your time. I'm going to go 75 minutes. Okay, that shows that we're, we're just starting to dance around a little bit there. And uh, that means we're right at 10 pounds of pressure. Turn this bad boy down to, yeah, whatever, something like that. And I'm gonna start my timer. An hour and 15 minutes. Now I do kind of want to watch that. If it starts rocking too much, that means the pressure's too high. If it stops rocking, that kind of screws up everything. So I can't let it stop rocking. let it cool down naturally. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the pin has dropped. I can take this off, and there is no more pressure. That means, obviously, there's no more pressure. So, now I can open this bad boy. It's not going to go through the roof. It's still hot. So, take this off. Give him a minute there. I think you see the steam. Steam's uh, steam's a meanie. We don't want to get burned up by that crap. And I usually try to open it the other way, which I sort of did, but the camera's kind of in the way, so let's just try this. Oh, it did have one fall over. Or a jar lifter, and I hope this didn't get screwed up too bad. That looks fine. Bubbling. Not doing good. And it looks like they're all doing okay. I didn't have any break, which is cool. I, I was kind of concerned about stacking them without having anything in between them. No, so, that's pretty cool. Still cooking. Okay, so we're going to set these bad boys over here on this little towel here and uh, try to get them all set out so they can cool off real good. You can see they keep boiling. It seems like after they cool down a little bit, they kind of do a little bit more boiling or something. Kind of funny, the pressure's changing and everything. And they're going to start tanking. The little tank thing is pretty cool. And the lids kind of pop down. 
I don't know if that shows up, but there's like a bubble on the ball lids. Are, are, well, there's one over here that just did it. But the ball lids, like this one right here, these guys, uh, they have a very, well, there, I think it just went. They have a very prominent uh, bubble. These lids are, I can't remember what they are. They're sort of uh, off brand, I guess. But yeah, even in the canner, they're starting to do the, the click. You know, that, that's a cool sound to hear when you're when you're doing canning. That's, that's what you want. There's some more. All right. Bad mama jammer. Now it's a good thing to not tip these critters over too far, because if you did, it'll put heat on the lid, and it won't be sucked in. It'll want to push out, and it'll push the juice out. Now what sucks is sometimes you get juice laying on top, or not juice, but the, the water from the canning and uh, you, you want to pick it up and tip it to get that off there. But when you do, that, that hot stuff in there that's still boiling, even on the ones I've taken out already, are, uh, it's going to come up here and it's going to heat this lid up and then it's not going to be sealed. So it's going to let go. The pressure is going to change on that lid. And there's something here you can kind of smell it and it smells freaking awesome. That's because during the pressure canning, some juices do escape. Now uh, that's just kind of like a normal thing. And you can see the, the lids are even, the rings are even loose. But it doesn't really matter. I always do go back and tighten them up. Once it cools down a little bit, I'll go back and give them a good snug. Now this is probably good for close to uh, two years. <clears throat> it won't last that long here with us as we go through it quite quite frequently, but I am going to try to save a lot of this for as long as I can. Uh, especially in our current economy and especially with things that are uh, happening, I suppose. Uh, slight concern about this coming November and what folks may or may not do. Uh, it's a scary time, man. I mean, it is scary. So you can see they're still boiling. And right now it's sort of warm. Uh, I don't have the actual temperature inside. But it's cold outside. It's in the 50s. So if somebody did open a window, it might be a shock on this stuff. So what I'm going to do is just cover it with a towel. And just let everything kind of cool down slowly. Kind of do its own thing. And that's, that's really it. It's just going to do a little clicky tink sound. And uh, and it really is that simple. Pretty much any kind of pressure canning. Uh, it's, it's basically whatever your altitude is. Whatever size jar you have. Don't put dumb stuff in jars. Put good stuff. And then cook it. And do your thing. You follow the few steps there. Uh, there's nothing nothing really scientifically difficult about it. It's just you just do what's there and uh, and it's good. And then you end up with delicious stuff that lasts for a while. These bad boys will cool slowly. They're protected and uh, I guess that's it for that part. Okay there was a question about uh, yeah I'm cooking on a glass stovetop. This is that is a glass stovetop, which I hate. I will never, ever, ever have another one. But how can I pressure can on this? It's supposed to not be able to do that. Well, inside there, and I really want to grab that, but I can't. There's a, a ring. Let me see if I can get a fork here. Or, well, here's a knife. Uh, inside there, there's a big aluminum standoff ring. Let me try to get it out here. Hot mamma jamma. And he's got little feet on this side, if I can turn around. See a little bubble sticking out? Those are the feet. That kind of keeps the jars off that. And then there is also a ring impression on the bottom of the canner. And that's, uh, that's uh, what I assume makes it okay to cook on a glass top. Anyway, folks, I guess that's about it. I uh, hope that was somewhat informative to whoever is watching. And, uh... You know, you can stuff. It's pretty much the same thing everywhere you go. Now, when you get into vegetables and uh, legumes and uh, 
making jellies. It's a completely different world. You don't pressure can some stuff. Some stuff you do, but uh, you know, it's a, you kind of got to look up everything you're doing. And there's so many different things that we can hear that I can't really remember everything just off the top of my head. So don't feel bad if you have to look up how to do things. Uh, it's very, very common. Uh, everything is just a little bit different, but with meat and in my area, it's with pints, 75 minutes, 90 minutes with quarts. Yeah, quarts. Quarts? Quarts? Sounds like quarts, the, whatever. Uh, with 10 pounds of weight. And that's it. And you, you follow the follow the venting thing, the heating thing, the canning cleanliness and all that, and you'll be fine. It, it, every pressure canner that you get, if you buy them new, they come with a booklet that kind of gives you the whole rundown on everything. That's, that's pretty much it. So, uh, well, I appreciate everybody watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And as always, have a good one.